Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the launch of Dragonflight these first two weeks. And as the recording of this, the Mythic Plus, Heroic, Normal, and Mythic, I said that's super weird, versions of the raid get launched tomorrow. So I want to give these first two weeks my perspective on it, the pros, the cons, and my concerns and hopes going forward. Now, with every single major patch and slash or expansion that Blizzard has put out for World of Warcraft, there were issues and not massive ones. It was no Warlords of Draenor. However, a lot of people were having issues logging in and playing at all for the first, I want to say 24 hours. I was one of the lucky couple that got in and logged in and was able to level. I leveled really slowly. I didn't really feel the pressure to keep going and going and going. I think I got to 63 or 64 the night of the release. It released about 6 p.m. my time. Maybe it was 7 p.m. I don't really remember, uh, but I didn't pressure myself. I didn't, I really wanted to enjoy it. I wanted to wake up the next morning, go to the gym and then keep leveling, not really have a lot of pressure because I noticed that we had these first two weeks and there wasn't a huge time crunch to get everything done. I'm not a world first raider. I'm not a heavy mythic pluser. I don't need 15 tunes. So I just kind of took my time leveling and I really enjoyed it. Leveling, I think this time was really smooth. I think a lot of the issues previously people expressed with not having flying mounts with new expansions, and that was alleviated with the incorporation of dragon flying really quick into this expansion. I will say, from a, from my perspective, I've always been interested in how, ever since flying has been introduced to the game, zones have had a crazy amount of verticality, and with how dragon flying works and the progressive nature of the glyphs, you're able to fully experience all parts of the zone because of you needing to swoop down. You're either you're on the bottom. So you experience the valleys all the way up to the cliffs of every single spot. And I think that was designed very beautifully. I'm not really sure what made leveling so easy this time. It felt like maybe it's just the culmination of, of all of these small things instead of one giant shining object. It was the progression system in dragon flying. The fact that you got flying so quick the progression system with the being able to find glyphs and upgrade your flying the levels went by fast and also the fact that you get first craft experience from professions really made the later levels speed along at a rapid pace once you complete the campaign you unlock adventure mode i think that's what it's called for your alts where your alts can level exactly how they want this is the improvement on the threat of fate system and so now world quests are immediately unlocked and there's a lot more other account wide unlocks that you get from your main dragon flying is upgraded through flying finding dragon glyphs hidden around the aisles which you only have to find once on your main all of your alts immediately can upgrade your dragon flying skill tree to the max rank no issues Certain unlocks are available during Renown unlocks, including more world quests, short uh, unlocks for like climbing world quest upgrades, fishing upgrades, stuff like that. Uh, the Community Feast is supposed to be an account wide unlock from the Iskar, but I had an issue on my Paladin where I had to regrind that Renown rank three, which is having flying mounts with new expansions. And that was alleviated with the incorporation of drag. All in all, I think the leveling system was a massive success for mains and alts. I, at this recording of this video, have three max characters, a shaman, a mage, and a paladin, and it was easy as hell on all of them. I will say, if you are leveling another character, make sure you get a crafting profession. Doing those first time crafts results in large amounts of experience and will really expedite your process to getting to max level. I would say actually, in these first two weeks, I don't really have any cons for Dragonflight from my personal experience. Well, I take it back. The Azure span lag, it's gotta go, okay? We gotta be done with it. I'm ready to be over it. Get it the fuck out, okay? We're done. Other than that though, I feel pretty good. I don't really, I haven't spent much time rare farming. Actually, scratch that. I have spent zero time rare farming because in one week, my gear's gonna be vastly different than what it is today because of mythic plus i'm not spending my time wasting it on sitting down for a rare for a 396 item when i can just progress in mythic plus with my friends or with random people and have fun doing that and get geared that way now will these people who are rare farming have better eye level for me for a longer period of time absolutely they are I'd be good for them. However, I don't really want to burn out on 
this like I did in Shadowlands. I don't want to set myself up to do all this content in the first month and then be like, man, what the fuck is there to do with this game? I'm happy just to hang out and get it done naturally. My shaman got two weeks of Mythic Zeros. My mage the same. And my paladin only got this last week of Mythic Zeros because I was slow on leveling him. The my shaman has a full set of 372 and something else from like a dragon bane keep thing i don't know i'm not really doing too much of those like side events either so i know people who have been doing that are kind of pissed because they're not getting the items they wanted and so they might have more cons than me but uh, for me in my perspective i've had a great time playing it i felt no pressure to get stuff done I feel very prepped going into tomorrow for the Mythic Plus release. I'm ecstatic about the future of Shadow, or oh God, we all know how Shadowlands turned out. I'm ecstatic for the future of Dragonflight. My biggest concern, and it always starts out where you feel okay with this in the beginning of expansion, is frequency of patches. Not patches, but changes, hot fixes. I want them to be more often, and I want them to continuously incorporate their thoughts on why they're doing it. Because sometimes you're like, hey, that's bullshit. And other times you're like, oh, okay, I guess that makes sense. I would really like to see continuous buffs rather than nerfs. I think if there is a standalone class like there was with Demon Hunter, I'm unsure where the nerfs really have placed them recently, but I would like them to be kind of brought into line, but I would like to see more classes brought up and I would like to see more classes be competitive. Healing right now feels pretty good other than Resto Shaman, but uh, I think Resto Shaman's gonna be fine. I think I'll be able to heal 15s on it with gear, no problem. Will it be harder? Yeah. Will it be impossible? Fuck no. It's just harder. And damage is no longer naturally incorporated into your tree, so you're gonna have to try harder for damage for higher keys. Whatever, I like the class. I'm gonna play it along with Ellie Shaman a lot. but. I would like to see more classes come up rather than put more classes down. Is that the way of things normally? No, but we'll see how it goes. I really would also like, I believe it's called the creation catalyst again. I'm unsure, but the device to cr let you create tier, I would like for that to be implemented a little bit sooner so I don't have to roll the lottery dice on my mythic or my vault, great vault opening every week, but that's how it is, then that's how it is. Sure, sure, sure. And I really would like to see tier sets not implemented in PvP, which is crazy. I know. I didn't say this earlier, but PvP gearing, beautiful, glorious, love it. Also, please, the a balancing part also applies to PvP, but some classes naturally have a shit ton of versatility built into their, PV, or to their tier sets, so it becomes PvP viable. While the other classes, have roughly a thousand less versatility in their tier sets and they just will not be able to play it. So the classes that naturally have tier sets that have the versatility on it have a hand up. And I'm not, not in love with that. I think that's a bad idea. I think PVP has the potential to be pretty good as every single expansion, but I would like to see it so they're on more equal footing. That does not have to be the answer for PVP, but that's just kind of what I thought. I mean, maybe there's another way to implement tier sets while also giving versatility to the ones that are lacking it. I don't know. If you think of something, let me know in the comments, but I just can't think of anything else. Another big pro for me is the renewed focus on personal customization options for your character, for your dragons or dragon flying mounts and everything of that nature. The renown and rep based systems constantly providing you this influx of cosmetic items has been awesome. I'm happy to see more things hidden behind that. I would like to see this uh, drive to create these items tied to other things within the game. I would like to see Mythic Plus and PVP to get different mounts per season. I would like, I'm not a battle petter. Would it, it would be cool for battle pet people to get new battle pets or toy things or whatever. I just want people like in the original World of Warcraft, I want to walk past somebody who is wearing a set of gear, the challenge mode set of gear from Mists of Pandaria, or back in the day, watch, we're out walk, watching somebody walk by with Thunder Fury. I want to see people walk by and be like, damn, that's really cool. I'm glad that they did that. I think Final Fantasy 14 does this awesome with the uh, ultimate 
weapon uh, skins or transmogs that you get, where if you walk past somebody in Final Fantasy 14 and they've got this sick fucking Heaven's Legend title on, and they've got that crazy weapon on, you're like, damn, that person did the ultimate or something of that nature. I just wanted the World of Warcraft equivalent. What started out as a video to explain my pros and cons really manifested it into a hopes and concerns for the future. Dragonflight's launch was awesome. I have enjoyed it. I am on a copium drip 24 seven. I am hopeful that this will be a fantastic, fantastic uh, release for Dragonflight. I think it's close, but will we always have people who are saying WoW is dead, but exclusively follow World of Warcraft content creators and retweet all giveaways? Yeah, those people will keep us going. And will Blizzard do everything right? No, they won't. I mean, they just won't, but I'm hopeful because this expansion launch was really close to perfect. Maybe not. I think it's time uh, to this thing. Yeah, your spam lag is fucking horrible still. Okay, three, two, one, it's jammed.